Okay. This is an ostrich egg. And this is a rusty railroad spike. And this is my dining room table. Ah, oh, ah, oh, LOL. I wasn't in the shed. I was in the dining room the whole time. <laughs> okay, now to actually get this started, let's actually go to the shed. Okay, I found this little baby railroad spike at an antique store and it just was cool and small and I thought it would be a perfect thing to make a little knife out of. And so the plan is to turn this into this, a tiny knife. This is a design I totally stole from the amazing Kyle Royer. He is a knife making master. The stuff he makes, incredible museum quality art pieces. The only thing I changed was I got rid of some of the curve and then I added a little bit right here. Just minor changes, but essentially this is Kyle's design and uh, if you haven't, go check him out. I will put a description down to his link. Now we're gonna get into some of the tools you will be using, but first... Make sure you have a nice sturdy bench like this one. Okay, no more of that, I promise. This is the real table. I'm definitely going to be using an assortment of files. Of course, I will be using some diamond bells. And I'm definitely going to be using more tools than these, uh, like a belt sander and some other stuff, but I can't think of more at the moment. So let's just find out together. Hey, little bro. Hello. What's up? Hello. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> How's it going? Hey, yeah. High five. <laughs> yeah, okay, enough shenane gains. Let's turn this into a beautiful little knife. In order to turn this into a tiny knife, we're going to do some forging on it because there's not quite enough width. If you look, the knife design sticks out on each side. So we're gonna have to basically squish this and flatten it out so that we can cut out this design from it. And the forge I'm going to use is this little baby homemade one that I made out of an old paint can, some high temperature rock wool and some refractory cement. Just put the rock wool inside and then smeared cement on top of it, drilled a few holes for the map gas torches and then this is just a little door that I made by putting some refractory cement in one of these bouquets, plopped it out, drilled a hole in it and uh, that turns into a Dior. So first thing we're going to do is wire wheel off some of the rust, get the forge crunk up and then uh, start wacky doing on it until we get it smooshy till we can make a knifey poo, okay. To set up the forge, we will insert the tips of the torches in the hills and then light them, putting the door in place so that it can get up to temperature. Add your metal and keep in place until it is glowing red hot. Now taking to the anvil, we'll start banging on it with the hammer. What I'm trying to achieve is not only widthening, but also lengthening the metal until it is the desired widthen and lengthen that I require. Be sure to use proper foam while blacksmithing because you'll want to look cool while doing it. Blacksmithing can be quite taxing on the body, so be sure to pace yourself. Now in order to add a wavy wavy, we'll use a pipe and bang it against it to better mirror the shape of the knife. As you can see here, this- <laughs> Just kidding. You can see I've shaped the little spike until it is, well, kind of wavy and flat. Now, when we put it on, it covers <gasps> the design, which is what we were trying to do. Now, what we gotta do is cut off this end, and then we're gonna go ahead and clean it up on the belt sander to flatten out both sides, and then we'll just continue continuing on. So let's continue. Now that we have our piece of metal to this point, the next few steps are pretty simple. We just take our pattern, cut it out, and then use it as a template to then transfer the design onto the piece of metal. Then we're gonna use this fancy tool that I got from France called the Anguille Grinder to cut it out. But before we get started, we're gonna need to go to the shed. Okay, we're in the shed.
Okay, now we have our blade shapeth to how we want it. The next thing to do is to heat treat it. Heat treating is the science of changing the properties of steel so that it's better suited for the application you're needing it for. So the lugubriously abridged version of the heat treatment process is before heat treatment, soft and bendy, after heat treatment by getting it really hot to the critical temperature and cooling rapidly, hard and brittle. Then you temper the steel by letting it sit at a lower temperature for a couple of hours. That will make it hard and tough. And that's what we want. Okay, after doing that, now I'm gonna slowly bring up my knife to critical temperature, and one way you know that it's reached it is when a magnet doesn't stick. I got my vegetable oil ready to quench it in, and of course I got it in that Nile Red beaker. Thank you, sexy science man. Quickly pull it out of the forge and plunge it in the oil, making sure to swish it back and forth, that way it cools quicker. Oh, how satisfying. Now we're gonna poop it in the oven to temper it at 400 degrees for two hours and hope I didn't ruin it. Yeah! I was successful in not ruining it. But if you look at it, you see all that crusty crap scale and burnt oil and stuff on there. We're gonna have to get that off before we go any further. I'm gonna do that again with some more sand papier. Then the next step, which is arguably the hardest part of this entire thing, we gotta make the handle. And since I said sponsors, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. They sent me something and I've seen pictures of it, but I wanna see if it's as good as it looks in the pictures. If you don't already know, Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. Whoa, that is actually really beautiful. Every month they introduce their members to cool new products such as outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more based on a preference quiz you fill out. Put all kinds of stuff in here like six packs of soda. And amazingly every box has at least $70 in retail value but costs only $45. I mean dude, look at this knife. It's freaking beautiful. Also, if you don't love the box they assign you, feel free to swap it for another one of their many other boxes. And their box lineup is changing constantly each month, so you know you're gonna find something that you love. So if you're interested about checking out Bespoke Post, please go to the description, click the link, and be sure to use code BOBBY20 to save 20% off your first month's subscription. Once again, use code BOBBY20 at checkout to save 20% off your first month's subscription. And thanks again so much to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. Ew, gross. Okay. The reason the handle is going to be so difficult is because of all these swoopy doopy curves where the metal meets the wood. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I do know that I'm going to be using zinc pewter for the pommel and the finger guard because it's gonna be way softer than using steel. And the reason I want it softer than steel is because I'm going to have to hand carve each of those little metal pieces. Not only do they have the swoopy doopy curves, but they also have to have a hill that goes right through them that also matches perfectly with the tang. I have no idea how I'm going to do this, so why don't you just watch along with me and find out? First I attempted to cut it on the bandsaw, which it did not. So next I tried my luck with the angle grinder and a cut off disc. Ground away for quite a long time until I thought maybe it was thirsty. Then I decided to try the reciprocating saw, which only clogged up the teeth with metal went back to the grinder to clean up the edges, then brought it to the shed to finish cutting off the piece. Once torn a twain, smoothed on the belt sander until I had a perfect little blank to b**k with. Incoming belch. Okay, wow, this was a huge pain in my butthole. Apparently zinc pewter does not like being cut. <laughs> and so the next step is to take our little cutouts, trace them out onto the piece of metal to create our pattern. Then we were going to be using our rotary cava with some bits on it to then cut around each part. Then we gotta make the little wooden piece that goes in between them and uh, uh, a roll montage.
Okay, the reason I'm adding marker to the tang is a technique in order to find the high points which are coming in contact with the finger guard from the inside. After you add the marker, go ahead and slide it on as far as it'll go up and anywhere the tang is coming to contact, it will leave a tiny mark from the marker. Those are the points that need to be ground down. And in order to grind it down, I'm going to use this tiny itty bitty burr to get inside the hole and grind down all of those marks. Repeat that process over and over until the piece slides all the way down onto the tang. And as soon as you get it fitting perfectly, be sure to do something very stupid. No, God! What was I thinking? Ah! Ah! I've made a huge mistake. So, um, I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story. I was getting this to fit perfectly. Oh, so satisfying. Slots right in. And then I looked this way and I noticed it was just a tiny bit off in line with the blade. So I thought maybe I could put it in the vise and just ever so slightly bend it. And it snapped like immediately. I mean, I knew better and everything and I still did it. Gosh, such an idiot. So when you harden metal, it becomes very brittle. And even with the temper, it still is brittle to an extent. And apparently it was very brittle. Very, very brittle. Anyways, I found a welder who said that he could actually fix it. Must be a wizard. And I'm leaving this all in because I want to show you that I make mistakes and I mess up. But you don't give up when you mess up. You just find a way to keep going. So tomorrow, we're gonna get up real early. I'm gonna drive there to this wizard and hopefully he can repair this without messing it up. So, cut to tomorrow. Oh wow, it's the next morning. Apparently inside here dwells the wizard who can fix the knife. All right, let's do it. It was at this moment that he knew he was not a wizard. Well, that didn't go as planned. <laughs> So what happened was, well, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's a lot worse now than when I brought it in. We're just going to try to make the best out of this situation. Thankfully, I have a friend who I should have called right from the beginning who's going to attempt to now salvage this thing. I just got, I got to make this work. So let's try and make it work again. Okay, I think I was wrong the first time. Actually, the wizard lives somewhere in there. Let's go find him. There he is. Jameson, hey man, you think you could help me weld up this boo-boo I made? Yes, sir. Awesome, all right, let's see what you can do. Look at him. He seems to be casting some sort of spell with that magic wand. Oh my goodness, his powers are growing. Look at the wizard work! Ah, it's beautiful! But I mustn't look in the light, for its power is too great. I'm a mere mortal and must not look upon it without the special wizard's helmet. Alright, I came outside because it's so noisy in there, but hey, dude who's doing the welding has a Twitch channel. He doesn't know I'm doing this, but it's weekend underscore bullet. It'd be really awesome if you guys maybe check him out. It, uh, you know, help grow his Twitch channel. Anyways, let's go see how he's doing. Oh, man. Oh, you are a wizard. Dude, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, let's see if we can grind this back down and bring it back to its former glory. And now deep thoughts with Duke. Okay, I was depressed. I mean really depressed for quite a while. That's why I haven't been making videos. I love making videos, but I just couldn't get the strength and also the, the will. Like I had no motivation. I didn't want to like force myself to get in front of the camera and like act fun, but do it all fake. I knew you guys would pick up on that and, and I would feel disingenuous. So I just didn't make videos. But notice I said was depressed. I'm doing so much better and 
I just want to encourage you guys that if you're going through something and if you're depressed as well, this too shall pass. But one of the things that really helped me was reaching out to friends. And I reached out to one friend in particular, his name is Mark Driggers. He's actually been in one of my videos. He was the model for the angel with wings sculpture. He's encouraged me to get back into working out and eating healthy and thinking positively. And anyways, I just want to say a huge thank you to Mark and all the time he invested in me. But also I want to tell you guys about his channel. He actually has a YouTube channel. He just hit over a thousand subscribers. It would mean the world to me if you guys would check it out. It's Mark Driggers Adventures. I'll put a link down in the description. Tell him that I sent you. Go surprise him. Anyways, I just thought some of you might want to hear that. I'm going to try to get back in the swing of things. It may take me a little while to get really ramped back up, but I've got a bunch of cool projects. Anyway, so just stay tuned and uh, I love you guys. So uh, let's get back to the NAF. And thus concludes Deep Thoughts with Duke. I'm finally back to where I was previously. Thankfully. Oh, what a waste of time. You know what? I'm not even going to think about it. Let's just move on. So the next step is to go ahead and finish shaping these metal bits. Then after that next step, we need to make the wood in piece that goes in between them. And the wood I'm going to be using is this red Malay burl, I think. Then we're going to put them all together. And then I'm going to shape the, I'm not exactly sure the process, the steps I'm going to be doing. So let's just get on with it. And that's how you make a tiny knife.